Oh, getting the old telephone calls, eh? Oh, oh it's Sarah Tudor. Right then. Pick up the phone. Right. Hey, lass, how's it going? Huh? <laughs> Hello? Here on Basic Glitches, what do you want? What's your question? Oh, I can't tell you that. I can't see anything. Oh, <laughs> we've lost the caller. <laughs> Oh, you divorced. <laughs> we have on tape <laughs> my actual divorce. Yay! Woo. Hey, Camo, you got an extra bed? <laughs> hey, YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. We're the basic liches. I'm Camo. And I'm Wolf. Today, we're gonna talk to players. We're gonna give you a bunch of tips. We are going to help you out if you're a first time player. We're gonna give you some. Basic tips, we're gonna give you some advanced tips. We're gonna help you, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep saying that we're gonna help you. Get someone to help this man. I can sense your apprehension. I can sense your nervousness. Dungeons and Dragons is public speaking. It's public math. Mm -hmm. Things that you thought you swore off in 11th grade. Like, Vicky Rigetti. Ah! Spaghetti Rigetti, I Spaghetti. still love you! <laughs> Oh no, that was her nickname. I don't know who she is. I'm so, oh no. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a made up person. <laughs> I thought this was real. No. And it's horrifying. And it's it's going to happen again. It's like when you're in 10th grade uh, trigonometry and they're like, okay, Kamo, I'd like you to come up to the board and uh, can you just solve this equation? Okay. And like, flop sweat. <laughs> Moisture. Yeah. Let's relax and breathe. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna give you some tips. We got some basic tips. We got some advanced tips. We got tips galore, baby. Mm -hmm. We're gonna help you out. All right. Um, let's, uh... You're gonna be the dungeon master. Okay, I'm DM. You are the dungeon master. I'm a on, player. Let me put on my DM, uh, you know, hat. So, I'm gonna come to you. I'm a first time player, and I'm gonna come up to you and ask, what should I bring? What should I be prepared? What do I need to know about my character or, or how to play. Huh? Where should I start? All right, perfect. These are all great questions. Asking questions is probably one of the most important things you can do. That's a that's a free tip for you guys right there. Um, no cost. <laughs> no cost, but we'll get back to that one. Um, be prepared. You want to bring, bring your books, you know, bring your player's handbook. Um, bring some dice, bring your character sheets, bring something to write with. Just be on the game right there. That is your head of most people. Don't, for your first couple games, you might show up to a group and they might have all this stuff for you. you. You're not expected to have the player's handbook. Maybe you don't have dice right away, but you need to get those things eventually. And if you want to be a great player, you want to be someone that the dungeon master enjoys having at your table, at the very, very least, you want to have those things. How do I play good? How do you play good? Yeah. Well. That's a subjective question there, Camo, but I'll do the best of my abilities as Dungeon Master to help you out. Um, first and foremost, it's up to you to understand how your class works, how your spells work if you have them, how your abilities are going to work. Where do I find that information? That's going to be in the Player's Handbook. You can also find it online, like D&D Beyond. There's a bunch of online resources that can help you out. You can buy like spell cards that will help you. Um, memorize your spells. That'll take a little bit of the weight off of. That's a tough one. Of yeah, spells are, are they're they're a thing. They're a having a cheat sheet with you as a player. Absolutely, big plus. What is the player slash dungeon master relationship? You want to think of the DM sort of as like the captain of the ship, right? I think everybody is playing the same game. You know, everybody is a crew member on this ship, but the dungeon master is the captain. They're the one steering the boat. They're the one that is, has the base, they have the most important job. They're trying to wrangle everybody together. The crew probably doesn't want to do their jobs. The, the, the DM, you know, you want to almost, it's almost militant. You almost want to treat them, you know, sir, captain, sir. Call your DM, like, hey DM, like, Give them that title, you know, give them that respect. That's a big thing. You want to have a healthy respect for your dungeon master. 
because they take a lot of personal time to get this game going. They might make it look very, very easy, but it's hard. Preparing a game and running things smoothly, it's like a magic show. Like, you're sitting here, you see the upper body, you know, but again, the feet are going. The nerves are happening. There's, I can, I can honestly say that at almost every game that I've ever DM'd for, like five to ten minutes while everyone's gossiping and doing doing their thing, I'm just like, okay, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. Keep keep talking. Keep yeah, doing yeah. your thing. You you feel this Mount Everest of pressure on your shoulders. So as a new player, just respect your DM. Just have I mean obviously you don't need to be like a subordinate to them, be like, yeah, sir, yes sir, I'll do whatever you say. Like it's not like that. It's not what I'm saying. Just understand that a lot goes into playing D&D. And it's, it's a lot goes into making a session run smoothly. It's not just knowing your content as a dungeon master of what you want the players to accomplish or, or give what you want to give the players. It's also um, people management at the table. It's also mm-hmm. getting people started and communicating. And there's so many other facets of it. So... When you get, you know, look at your dungeon master, and if he looks like, you can see that he's in a in a mode to like get ready to start. Just you know, um, end your conversation and look at your character sheet and get ready because it's dungeon it's dungeon time. Yeah, that's not a that's not a that's not a time to be. I just thought of another thing. You need to set certain boundaries when you're playing D&D. And I'm not talking about between... I'm not talking, like, physically, like, between, like, you and the players and you and the DM. I'm talking about... Like, six feet. <laughs> six feet apart, masks up, um, you know, hands where I can see them. <laughs> no funny... No hanky-panky funny... It was funny this hand. Under the table. <laughs> Leave the naughty bits alone, all right? If everyone's agreed to play in, like... A whimsical fairy tale sort of uh, Fey Wild game. Maybe you're playing the most recent adventure. You're playing the Beyond the Witch Light. Mm. Uh, you know, a fairly whimsical, wacky little tale that Wizards of the Coast has put out. But you, as a new player, decide to be dark and gritty, and you're running around um, doing X rated, pardon my French, poop. You're doing X rated poopy things. Mm. Um, knock that crap off. Like, nobody wants to know, be like, you're going to the brothel and you're doing all sorts of inappropriate things. Nobody wants to hear that crap, okay? It's it's juvenile. It's misogynistic. Can I roll to get laid? Yeah. No, you can't. You can roll to get the F out of my house. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what if we're playing for a little bit and um, maybe I get stuck and I don't know what to do in a certain situation. And I kind of feel hesitant as to what to do with, like, in regards to rules or maybe I don't understand something. If you don't understand a rule, ask. Ask somebody at the table or ask the DM. Uh, it's perfectly fine to say something out of character and say, Hey, DM, uh, I don't understand, you know, what this is. Or, or... They might even say, like, hey, I actually don't think that how you're ruling this is is right. You might be a rules lawyer. Maybe you know the rule book inside and out more than the DM. Like, nobody likes lawyers in general. It's fine to understand the rules, and it's fine to argue about stuff, but you have to remember, again, there's a respect. It's the DM's game. They're going to have final say on anything that happens at the table, and... If you guys can't agree on something, you don't want to bring the game to a screeching halt. Again, we're going to lose Rick. He is so close to just leaving. He's going to leave his whole family if this game doesn't go on. Please. Fun's fun, but who needs it? I'll be in the garage. All oh, for Rick. But you don't, seriously, you don't, want to just, you don't want to bring the game to a screeching halt. If you guys are going to have a rules argument, the DM has the ability to, to squash that and be like, hey... We'll figure this out after the game. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly civil. And I think that's the best way to keep everything moving. You constantly want to be thinking about the pace of the game. You don't want things to bog down. You don't want your nose in the rule book. That's not fun 
for the other four, five, six people at the table if two of you are getting into a pissing contest um, about, like, grappling and falling off a cliff. Or what the check is for grappling and yeah, and how many feet versus your strength modifier. You I need. hit terminal velocity this amount of feet, and I only take X amount of damage. One. It's only a four d six. So, also, if you are going to be checking the rule book, check when it's not your turn, or mm-hmm. check when there isn't a group activity thing going on, so that you can still be paying attention. Um, you know, even if during combat it's not your turn, you wanted to look something up. Make sure you're not like doing heavy reading either so that when it comes your turn and you're like oh what what happened oh i mm-hmm. i cast eldritch blast <laughs> so yeah. just give me uh, you're the dm give me a tavern situation sure so you walk up uh you see a uh, person serving drinks giving food orders uh you see over here there is a bartender he is cleaning some you know mugs you know spitting them you know, real, real, getting them real nice and clean. Okay. Um, he sees the group. He sees that you guys are adventurers, and he's like, "Hey, I like you. Come over here." Oh, I'm, I'm first. I'll take initiative. Uh, my character's name is Talon. Uh, hey, how's it going today? I was wondering if you had any information uh, about what's going on in the town, and then immediately someone else jumps in and and interrupts what you're doing and orders a drink because they wanted to do something. Uh, Kind of what do I do in that situation or what should happen in those situations that we should be aware of? If you're a new player um, and you're you're the new player that is interrupting, uh, the the tip here is don't be a ball hog. Don't hog the spotlight. Uh, Wait for your turn. If something is happening, if an action... if You have to always think of the game as like if-then statements where essentially it's all... DM is going to give you guys a situation, and one or all of the players are going to react to it. Well, if one of the players is reacting to something or interacting with the DM, wait your turn. And if you're really, really excitable and you're so gung-ho about playing D&D, you're just constantly talking. You're constantly, you're, you're like, I'm going to be the face of the party, uh, even though I have no charisma uh, I'm going to be the person that breaks a bottle of beer over this dwarf's head. I'm going to do all this crazy stuff. I want me, me, me. I'm having so much fun in this world. Like, that's great. That's awesome. We want you to be enthusiastic. Mm. We want you to be that excited and, and interacted. But... Those are the best players. Those are the ones that you can turn into the best players. Having that excitement is key. But you need to rein it in a little bit. You need to control it. And you need to understand... That D&D is a social game. It's a social experience with everybody at the table. And it's not its not one person. There can't be a Michael Jordan that's just going to break some ankles and hit a three-pointer. And everyone's just like, it's Jordan. We can't stop him. We can never stop him. It's Jordan. You, you see the, did you see the last dance? You can't stop no. Jordan. No. Was, you see him? A lot of sports references this episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just segue into the sports channel. <laughs> Coming next fall. <laughs> Lich is on ice. <laughs> Ooh, Lich is on ice. <laughs> Everyone came to play. Mm-hmm. And it's great that you're excited. And we want you to be excited about it. But if you realize that you're too forward and, and too much, uh, um, you know, it's great to have the spotlight. But take a break and, and pause. Let other people come in. Because some people are, are more hesitant. They want to play it, but they're more hesitant because they're just, like, nervous about, oh, when do I come in? Like, he seems like he's having a lot of fun, you know? So just mm-hmm. make those breaks and, and give those opportunities to your playmates. Playmates? Yeah. Bunnies. We're all sexy bunnies here. Lich's Mansion. Yeah. Say that um, I ran into traffic on the way to the Dungeon Master's home. Mm. And I'm just, uh, you know, what should I do in that situation? Communicate. Hmm. That phone that you were checking your scores on earlier, send a text message to the group. If you're playing D&D, you should probably have, like, a group chat with all your friends that are playing. Send a thing, be like, hey, stuck in traffic, going to be 15 minutes late. Again, be respectful of everybody's time. It takes two seconds. Send a text. Hmm. Try not to be that person that is 
bails at the last second. Oh, the no shows. The no shows can literally kill a group. It will eat at the soul of your dungeon master for the person. It's fine if you miss a week. I'm not saying that you need to be there. It's like attendance doesn't need to be perfect. Obviously, we all have lives. But you if do. you're the if you <laughs> if you're that person that constantly bails 35 minutes before every session, you know, people are like, "Oh, called it." Tony's not making it. Tony Baloney can't make it. Big surprise, big shock, everybody. Seriously, don't 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 bail like 35 minutes before a game. If you don't want to play, be honest. Just be like, hey, I'm not feeling it tonight. You know what? That's okay. If it's a constant thing where you can't show up, maybe you have to have a conversation with a DM and be like, this isn't gonna work. That's fine too. We're all adults. Act mm-hmm. like adults. Communicate. Um, I'm going to interject. And oh. I'm going to give you a free tip. Okay. We're very big foodies on this channel. Mm. But you, if you're a new player and you you want to make uh, you want to make friends, bring something. Bring some chips. Grab some beer. Grab a bottle of wine. Um, bring yeah. stuff to share. Bribe the DM. Find out what they like. What's their favorite. Uh, Coca-Cola, maybe like uh, Cherry Coke, maybe like Dr. Pepper. Bring a 12-pack of Blue Moons. Get some, um, what's that great stuff that Taco Bell's got? Tacos. No, Baja Blast and yes. diarrhea. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Don't bring the <laughs> diarrhea, but bring, just be like, I got a liter of Baja Blast. You said my favorite thing and the worst thing. <laughs> that <I could> possibly <laughs> That's Taco Bell. <laughs> I think it's a I think it's a joke when they when you get your Taco Bell and they you're driving away and they're like, I hope you have a great day because they goddamn know <laughs> your day is going straight down the crapper once you consume that delicious taco meat. Don't show up with a sub for yourself and nothing for like the rest of the group. That's a big no no. Uh, if you bring food, bring food to share, bring drinks to share. Again, you're gonna be there for a few hours. You know, make it make it enjoyable enjoyable experience. Bring some food. Bring some snacks. Bring yeah. some chips. Bring chips. some things. Bring yeah. some things. Bring, bring some things. Bring some things. Bring some goddamn bring, things to D and D. So we're sitting at the table and we're playing, and we run into a group of creatures, and you say, "Let's roll initiative." The game changes a little bit at this point. Uh, what? <laughs> so what I, I, so I roll dice right in Camo's face. <laughs> Right off his cheeks. That's oh. <laughs> all so I get my crits. <laughs> get my crits off your face. The game suddenly changes. Yes. Uh, drastically, actually. <laughs> so what what happens during that time and what should I do uh, to help everyone at the table and the DM? If you're a new player and you're you're just sort of like feeling out combat for the first time. There's a lot. There's a lot. Combat is the most rules-intensive, heavy part of the game. The rules lawyer, lawyer's like, oh, here we go. Like, Did somebody say, rules lawyer! Woo! I actually had a surprise Woo! round. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot to combat. Try your best to understand basically how initiative works, how your attacks and abilities work, um... Pay attention to what's happening. You want to be able to maybe piggyback off of like your your other players and stuff. You can do cool combos and things. Think about an Avengers fight and like yeah. Iron Man blasting his beam off of Captain America's shield and like yeah, interact with each other. That stuff's awesome, but it, that'll come with time. I think for if you're a new player, be ready when it's your turn. If there's a bunch of combat happening and you're you're just dicking off and you're not paying attention and you got your nose in the rule book looking up uh, spells and people are like, hey, you know, it's your turn, dude. You don't want to be that guy. Pay attention. Dungeon uh, Master is trying to keep everything going as fast as possible, as fast as it can be. Keep a good pace through it. Every um, round that happens, that means every turn that everyone takes at the table is six seconds in the real world. Mm -hmm. It's not going to feel like that when you're all taking your turns, but that one round of everyone doing things is six seconds of action. 
and everything that they have done in those six seconds. Mm-hmm. So that's why the dungeon master is going to be like, okay, it's your turn. All right, you do this, and boom. Oh no, you miss. But and then we're on, we're moving on. So try to keep it. That's why you want to think about what you're doing next while other people ahead of you are taking their turns. Exactly, precisely. Combat can turn into an absolute slog in Fifth Edition and a lot of uh, fantasy role playing games. To be to be frank, so to keep things moving, know your abilities. When it's your turn, um, be ready to act. Don't be the person that just stared off into a corner and for the last four minutes waiting for your turn. Be engaged in the battle and what's happening. Try to think outside the box. Don't just try to fight um, with your swords and spells. Look around the environment. See if there's cool things you can do. That will really impress a new... Uh, for, as a new player, that'll impress a DM. That's that's like a... That's a hot tip. That's like a... <clears throat> giving you a secret... Use the environment. I love it. Yeah, giving you some secret juice right there. Mm-hmm. But most importantly, don't be afraid to die. Mm. D&D is a game of consequences. If you're playing... In a completely low stakes, nothing's ever going to happen to your characters kind of game, it's boring. D&D is at its most fun when you're at the mercy of the dice and they're telling stories and maybe your character didn't make it. That's okay. As a new player, you have to be okay with the fact your character might not survive a session. You can always make a new character. You can always make a new character. And making a new character is fun. It's awesome. I hate losing characters. I hate it when they die. You should hate it. If you love the character that you've made, you will hate losing them when they die because you've you've put a piece of yourself into this character. And like if someone at the table, if their character dies during combat, have your character like make a big deal about it. It's like, a, yeah. they get stabbed through the chest, and on your next turn, you're like, Rah! so, like, and then you charge in and, and you know, trying to do, or you're being a little reckless because of what just happened. Um, that'll make it big for them, mm-hmm. knowing that the party rose up yeah, the party as, they, is, as, they, as they went down, a yeah. blaze of glory, Bon Jovi style, mm-hmm. showing our age. Um, <laughs> young guns, baby. Yeah. Young guns, too. Had La Bamba in it. Emilio Estevez. Great movie. Your character <laughs> might die. Just yes. be cool with that. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there who are who think that if your characters die, the DM is adv- ad- adversarial. They think they're trying to do it on purpose. Or That's not the case. This isn't Game of Thrones. You're not going to die that much. It's, it's, it's not going to happen often. No. But when it does, be prepared. Be like Scar. So what are some of the final tips that we can give uh, to players that they should be doing at the table? All right, these are the final sort of basic things that you should be doing. Uh, number one, take notes. You have a notebook. You have something to write with. Uh, even if it's just your character sheet, good players, take notes. If you're new to the game, write down the names of NPCs. Write down the names of towns. Write down what you guys did in that session or who you meet. Or what you did. Take notes. Very simple, but it definitely separates the chaff when it comes to mediocre players and players that are enjoyable to play with. It's like, oh, you remembered what happened last time. and That makes a DM so happy. Mm. It's a social game. Be interactive. Be part of the group. Be part of the party. Uh, get involved in the group's plans and decision-making process. Don't be afraid. Don't be. Don't sit back. Even if you're a new player, don't sit back and be passive. Um, I always get this mental picture of when that's happening and the whole group's doing everything, uh, and there's just one player that is just not engaging. They're afraid to do something, and I'm just thinking of video game man doing his motion, his his just idle. He just stand there. Looking at the wall. That's what I. That's what I. That's what I get. You know, don't be that guy. Don't be the idle. <laughs> don't be the idle person. Uh, get involved. Are we ready to kill something? Are we ready to go? Last thing I guess is make your intentions clear. Uh, if you're going to perform an action, or if it's in combat or social, even if you're just talking to somebody. 
explain to the DM exactly what you want your character to do. You don't want there to be a disconnect between what your character is doing and how the DM perceives it, because if they start narrating something and it's not exactly what you thought it was going to be, you need to speak up and be like, oh, that's not what I meant. Um, so that's that's okay to do, too. You're like, like you, you can interrupt the DM and be like, no, 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 no. Like, I didn't... When I was talking to that guy, my intentions were to be subtle and, you know, just sort of get some information and, like, read his body language. Like, I don't want to... I don't want to try to, like, convince him to do anything. Like, that's okay. Like, because maybe what you said in the conversation or, or how you explained it to the DM wasn't clear or he just interpreted it differently. That's okay. Just try to be as clear as possible. Um, and my last thing is, is don't crack jokes all the time. Don't be the guy that is like, oh, hey, like, I'm gonna, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, the halfling's butt, squeeze it, make him fart, and then, uh, I'm gonna go, uh, make out with, uh, the bard singing over there. I'm just gonna do all the dudes in here. Um, and then the DM is like, is that really what you're gonna do? He's like, no, I'm just joking, man. I'm no, gonna, yeah, I think I'd do that. I'm just gonna order some mutton and get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> don't that's wasting time it's funny it's funny once in a while like you know like oh like i i jump off this thing it's like because it, what's gonna end up happening is the dm's gonna be like listen guys all you guys are doing is joking and i don't know what's a joke and what your actual actions are so i'm gonna in implement a rule that says what you say is what you do everything's and canon from here on from out here on out it's all <laughs> things coming out of your mouth unless you say this is outside of character or outside of game i'm taking it at face value you the joke does get old don't don't <laughs> let that happen don't yeah. don't be the grab ass guy all the time you're gonna be the troll under the bridge yeah don't be the troll and that's it let's move to some more advanced stuff all right ah. what's on the advanced list all right we're gonna get to some more advanced tips for you new players i'm gonna take off my dm's Jock strap and uh <coughs> sorry about that. I'm gonna give it to Kamo here, and he's gonna be the DM. There's a lot of years on that belt right there. Wear it well. And I'm gonna act as the fledgling new player and I'm gonna ask him some advanced tips and cool questions. Ooh. I'm ready. Alright. So I'm a new player. I've got a few games under my belt, and everybody at the table is good at role playing. And they have these amazing backstories, and I'm really intimidated by that. Help me out. Uh, what tips do you have for me? Don't get discouraged at all when first starting. You don't have to roleplay your first time at the table. Um, if everyone's roleplaying and doing voices, and uh, you know, you're like, oh wow, they're really good, right? Um, don't feel pressured like you have to. You can always just describe how your character acts you can describe how they speak and just voice your character in that way like third person yeah like third person okay from the beginning yeah and as a start that's a good start a good starting point if you're nervous to be doing voices and and joining in on that and maybe your whole group at the table does that maybe you know that's their level of role play mm -hmm. um if they are at a higher level you know try something that you have seen on tv or in a movie um you don't have to do a voice but if you make your voice high or low you know oh i'm just gonna always talk in a low kind of droll voice uh all the time it's hard to start separating yourself from the from being a player and being the character in the game at first you are the player and the character and you're trying to figure it out Yes, I have a lot. Of, I have a big problem. I, as a new player, I'm seeing things happening at the table, and I'm reacting reacting to them as Wolf, mm -hmm. and I'm having a hard time, you know, wondering what. And you're like, what would what would you do? What would I as Wolf do? Yes. Well, no, I'm I'm thinking like, what would my character do? What mm -hmm. you know, what's Death Fist gonna do? So the easiest thing to do at a start is to think what you would do, mm -hmm. right? That's the easiest thing to do. And then as you start getting deeper into how you want to play your character, think about more of what your character would do. If 
and the best way to do that is to think about what your character's motivation is mm -hmm. for being in that world. Uh, what their, you don't have to write an entire massive backstory about it. He could just um, maybe have lost everyone and is looking for a purpose. And that's really all it is. That's his motivation. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, I really just need a family to, to stick to and, and I need you know, brothers, brothers in arms, and we fight together. And that's a perfect uh, motivation and, and way to get you started. And now that's, now you start making decisions based off of what the character wants and does rather than what you as the player wants to do. Interesting. And that's when you start getting into a higher level of play and it gets really exciting. And now you have made your little character ball. You know, think about what they're doing, how they act. And that's the first step of getting into character. I have another question. My character, I'm coming up, coming up with a backstory. Um, I'm coming into this group full of experienced players. Um, I'm worried that my character is not going to fit in. Um, I'm worried about. I'm worried about my backstory. I'm worried about things like that. Um, that's really, really, really intimidating. Like, mm -hmm. what do you have any tips for that? Um, I'd ask, some some Dungeon Masters will ask you to write a backstory, and some won't. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to, Dungeon Masters is like, yeah, sure, you know, give me something. Um, Dungeon Masters always want more from a backstory for a player. They don't want too much, I think. Like, just like a page of background information is perfect. Um, but if you're into it, and you want to write something and, and make some kind of background for your character, then... Make sure that you're not making this, like, complete closed little story. Um, because then it does help the Dungeon Master a little bit, in a way. But make sure that you have, like, a lot of loose ends. What I mean by this is, like, important family heirlooms that have been lost. Or, um, uh, you know, maybe it was a weapon and it's broken. Um, I wonder where that's from. And then, uh, uh, yeah, things you can't find or need to find or I, family well, members that are well, lost. I don't have, I don't, my character doesn't have any family. They're all dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Super dead. tragic. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy named the Jester killed them in the alley. And all I remember is these pearls dropping in the alley as a little boy. Oh, yeah. Um, Batman's the perfect character to not play in D&D. <laughs> but the pearls are really important to my character. Yes. Um... They're, my family's all dead. You can't change that. They're all dead. Nope. They're all dead. What they do I all died. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> That's what you said without saying it. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Wayne Batman has no place at the table. <laughs> he wants to play alone. If you're going to play alone with a dungeon master and you're doing a one on one situation, that's the kind of character you can play there. Um, but if you're going full Kratos and, you know, you, you can't love a single other person in your life and you're a loner and uh, you can't coordinate well with, <clears throat> with others, that in a cooperative game, there's a problem. Everything you touch, you destroy, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, I can't show you affection. <laughs> oh, damn it. I showed affection. Boy! Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so you, alright, so you want to make a memorable character. You want them to have... I'm gonna get... What if they have parents? Is that okay? Of course. Yeah. What if Their I have, parents like, can be dead. That's not what I'm... That's fine. No, but like, should I have living parents? Sure. That's more fun for the Dungeon Master to grab onto some uh, strings and start playing with your backstory and throw curveballs at you during the game. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I, I think another fun thing to do with making a character is give them, like, a flaw. Mm. I, th I think, like, a lot of new ca new players just want to make this, like, superhero. And they don't want them to have any flaws or any sort of um, things that they get hung up on. Give your guy a crippling da gambling addiction. Or, you know, he's addicted to old Toby and he smokes all the time. Mm. Um, or he just can't get enough of food you know he's just 
Bilbo. He's just like, oh, I miss my home so much. I don't know where that fucking voice came from, but... <laughs> I miss my home. I miss my home so much. I don't know what... Vi- he's Stewie Griffin playing fucking Bilbo. <laughs> I miss my home. Don't be all like, um... Um, massive. I have huge muscles. And my skin is purple. And I have a golden glove with five gemstones that make me invincible to all damage. No place for Thanos. No place for Kratos. No place for Batman. You're... So you're you're saying not to be those guys? Yeah. Okay. You can be the loner. But be... I don't know if you're... Not many people are familiar, but... If you're familiar with Stargate Atlantis, there's a character called Ronan. Nerd alert! (laughs) And Ronan is the loner, Mm. but... He is exactly that trope that I described earlier where he has nothing left and needs some kind of companionship. He he has some reason to cooperate with others, even though he's standoffish, you know, doesn't get along well and and is uh, very unruly. Mm -hmm. You can have those traits and they're fun to play, but yeah, don't be the puller. yeah, I think I think playing that the edge lord character is difficult for a new type, new new player character, new person person that's new to D and D. And you'll want to do it because like it's an opportunity to be able to to be play something that. that you're not. Yeah, that's I. It's so easy to fall into that trap. It just doesn't work well at the table with other cooperating with other players, and they don't know what to do with your character. They're like, okay, well, you deny every opportunity and every suggestion we've made. We're kind of just like against you, and you don't want that situation. Where we're like, okay, oh, yeah, we you start don't... attacking you now. Are you are you an enemy? Yeah. When when the group starts thinking mutiny or literally <laughs> killing your character, um, you done effed up. That's very easily changeable. So don't have to make a new character. We can just uh... you, you can edit that. Yeah. yeah. That's another. Yeah. All right. So all right. So let's say um, I have made an edge lordy character, mm. and you're trying to nip this in the bud, um, or maybe I'm really excited about the game, and the game ended, and I want a little bit more. Is it okay for me to like send the DM emails and talk about the game? Oh hell yes! Is that something that I should I love, do? I love when players outside of the game reach out and be like, "Hey, I want to. <clears throat> I would like to explore this side of my backstory." Don't don't be all like telling the dungeon master what you want to see happen. That's kind of dungeon master may not be able to control all of that, right? Um, certain things happen at the table with rolls, and mm-hmm. if someone else is going to roll something, and it depended on that important plot hook in your story, and uh, it didn't it didn't go so well. Don't put that pressure on the dungeon master. The dungeon master is telling your story, and. Enjoy the mystery of not knowing what's going to happen to your to your character or things that are being pulled from your backstory and used. Just that fact is an incredible way to feel connected to the game and the story that's happening at that time. So I shouldn't I shouldn't be upset if the DM starts like tinkering with stuff. Please with my don't. Backstory. Please don't be upset. Um, we can understand that you did take some time and a long thought process to come up with your backstory and, and now you, you hold it in high regard and, and you really babied it, right? But it's, you know, let, give the dungeon master the freedom to play around with it. Um, what if the DM is like, outside of the game, we're, we're emailing back and forth, is it okay for the DM to like, add to my backstory? No. No? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> well, Everything else is fine except for that. Like, give don't... The, give me the jockstrap back. Don't <laughs> add shit to my backstory. I came up with my backstory, all right? Give, give me the jockstrap. My backstory... <laughs> give me the jockstrap back. <laughs> my backstory is done. Complete. Act three. Mm-mm. It's a closed circle. Done. Don't screw up my backstory. Fine, like, then I won't. And you'll never see anyone from your backstory ever appear in the game. Bingo. <laughs> Let the DM have fun with your backstory. If your father is dead and he suddenly shows up in a game, don't be pissed off. Be, try to just be like, all right, that's weird. 
I thought my dad was dead. I thought I spent like six days writing this elaborate thing explaining how he tragically died at uh, Red Roof Inn off of <laughs> New Jersey in another plane of existence. But here he is. You can't get mad at that. You need to trust your dungeon master to do something cool with your backstory. Even because he might look at it and be like, "There is no, he, this person gave me nothing to work with," so I'm gonna tinker with stuff and I'm gonna, you know, make my own crap happen. Are there any tips that I should be doing uh, just to be a better player at the table? Is there anything I should do um, while I'm playing the game? Yeah. Do you have any tips for that? Sure. So, kind of like at a next level, after you've wrapped your head around to your character. You've been playing for a while, and you, you, you've got some experience with your character now. Maybe you, you've got it down really good. You do a voice. You, you, you can play during combat. You can play during role play. Now start... I've leveled up as a person. You've leveled up as a person and a player. Wow. Yes, you're wow. now... You are now pro player. Wait. No, let's cut it down. You're now a good player. Yes, you play good. I'm a good boy. Good boy. I'm a good boy. Next thing you want to do is think about, start focusing and paying attention to other characters. Oh, okay. Maybe even write down uh, things about other characters in your notes. Mm -hmm. And start interacting with them. And ask, you know, as your character, have your character ask questions about their character. And start pulling out plot hooks. And that's going to help your Dungeon Master out a whole lot. And you get this new level of play that is just so awesome. So amazing. Um, you know, start the game with one of the players being your brother or sister or aunt or uncle or, you know, whatever, a, a friend from battle. Mm -hmm. And just coming in, um, especially if it's a new player, you know, they're... Um, ready right off the bat. They already feel like, oh, I'm already in this world. Yeah, it creates that immediate immediate sense of immersion, right? Yeah. All right, that's that's cool. I like that a lot. But you want to try to be as active as possible during combat, during role play. You know, if your character is a buddy with another character, cheer for that character and get excited for them and pull off you know, celebrate the win together as, mm -hmm. as characters and don't just sit there in the back and and constantly always thinking about how can I be better. You can be better by focusing on everyone else and elevating that by being being excitement. Fan, being fans mm -hmm. of the other players at the table. Mm -hmm. Like that's what everybody wants. Like when D and D is clicking on the highest of cylinders, it is a wonderful sort of euphoric experience that's shared between the dungeon master and all the players and it's almost like chasing a high it really is it's it's very hard to explain but exciting things happen close calls really uh amazing plans are concocted they don't work quite as well as you think they are but someone else has a great idea you're working as a team like it's this amazing wonderful experience Cherish that. Cherish your friends. Like, cherish the, the players at the table. Like, cherish their characters. Like, you should be a tight-knit group, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that the best D&D groups just have that sort of... that it's, it's like a bond. Yeah. It's like a bond that is both at the table and in everyone's imagination with these players, the, with their player characters. And you get that by playing more at the table, too. The, yeah, the just, more you play... The more you try to create those interactions and uh, create that, that the bond, more, the more you know. <laughs> so what if I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm good at working with my teammates, I'm good at my backstories all set, um, I'm, I'm pretty competent in combat, I know all my abilities and spells and stuff, um, but for the D, when the DM's describing stuff, I kind of want to go off and do my like own thing. You know, he's describing like a missing person or something and I'm just like I'm not interested in that. Hmm. Like uh, my character is not interested in that. Yeah. That can happen. 
That can totally happen. And the thing, the thing to do in that situation is to... You will eventually get to that moment where you're let off the chain. Mm -hmm. And the dungeon master is like, you guys are free to roam about the town. Go do what your little hearts desire. But right now, he might be in a spot where... Um, you know, he kind of wants to feed you through a tunnel or, or make certain decisions, even if it's not a direct railroad lead, right? You're on this path. Take the leads that are given to you. Take the bait. You know, uh, he might be giving you a red herring and, you know, something else to follow. But take those bites. Bite the hook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to be your DM's favorite player... Whenever you... It, it's pretty obvious where the adventures are when you're playing. It's a trap. <laughs> but that's okay. Just like Master Chief is like, I, I, I know it's a trap. Yeah. I just need a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> just just bite on the plot hooks. You'll... you'll The game will move faster. Your, guy, your characters won't be just meandering about town, like, getting up to no good. The dungeon master is going to get to, like, actually run stuff that they prepared. I'm not saying don't go off the rails or don't go off the tracks and explore. That's D&D. &D. You have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But your dungeon master will let you know when those moments arrive. Yeah, but the DM is trusting you to take the bait. They're dangling the worm. They're like, here's where the adventure is tonight. You guys don't... It, you really don't have to take it. You don't have to bite the, bite the worm, take the bait. You can literally be like, you know what? This town sucks ass. I hate all these people, and I don't give a crap about any of them. Peace. We're out. And then you guys leave, and the entire adventure that was prepped is gone. Now That's... it's just random encounters until you guys are bored out of your mind and fat off of Doritos. That's fine. That that A good DM will riff with that, they will improvise, and they'll make it work. But every now and then... You know, your DM's trusting you. <laughs> That's a big part of that relationship, is the trust between the players and the DM. They're trusting you to take the bait of the story and the plot hooks that they're throwing out there. And if you're always going nowhere or actively trying not to do what the, what the DM is leading you towards, you're just going to defeat the Dungeon Master's motivations for wanting to do this. <laughs> he oh. wants to tell a story or... He, he wants you guys to have this grand adventure, and he's having a hard time leading each session because you keep doing the opposite of where he's trying to lead you. It can kill a man. Mm. It can kill a woman. It can kill... A dog. A dog. Or a Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. It can kill the best of us all. Or even an ideal. It can kill... These two guys right here were no, once... No, they, they did. They were once really happy dungeon masters. Mm-hmm. We absorbed their souls and became demi-liches. Mm. You'll never find our phylacteries. <laughs> so if it is your first time at the game table, don't freak out. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Maybe there's someone else that's new with you, but if you're the only new person, it's very easy to get into the groove of what everyone else is doing. Just absorb as much as you can and see what everyone else is acting and what they're rolling and... and... <sighs> <laughs> just, just breathe. It's okay. Breathe. It's gonna be all right. Just know that every single person at the table at one point was a new player. Mm -hmm. um, they're there to help you, just as as much as the dungeon master is. And after after a while, you're gonna be a pro. You're gonna be. You're gonna go from Padawan to to Jedi Master, and you're gonna have all the answers. And when the new guy joins the group, once Rick finally leaves, because he's sick of Terry's crap, um, you're going to be able to, you know, help that person out. So that is the basic liches, basic tips, and advanced tips for brand new players. Um, enjoy this time. Don't be afraid. I think that your first, like, 5, 10, 15 games as a player are kind of, like, if you get into the hobby and you really like this, I think that those are going to be, like, your best games. Mm -hmm. It's, you're, you're chasing the dragon at that point. You're just like, 
I don't understand. Like, we were, like, you'll go home and you'll, like, try to tell your significant other about, like, what happened. And you're gonna be like, we were at this thing and the dungeon master did this. And I didn't understand it, but he, like, it, it's gonna be, like, almost unexplainable how the dungeon master is pulling the strings and just flowing and and riffing and making and just going with the flow with all this crap that's happening. And that's cool, babe. Yeah. <laughs> it's too real, Kmo. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think I think this is the best time as a player, that beginning time. I, I, you're not jaded. You're not cynical. You're not like, I'm waiting for D and D five point five or D and D six. I'm gonna wreck this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you haven't gotten to the point where you're gonna. I'm gonna win. You're gonna destroy the entire group just because yes. you're you're pissed off. Everyone will die and be at my mercy. Have there. fun. Play with your friends, make new friends. We are basic ass liches. Mm -hmm. We're gonna say good night, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And get the hell out. Peace. I don't know. Peace. She's calling me back. No, oh, I'm back in good graces, baby. Okay. There we go. Hey. It is snowing. According to the ring camera, it's snowing a little bit. Okay. You're on basic glitches. What? I'll see you when you get home. Bye. <laughs> you were doing well, and then you sacrificed everything. <laughs> At the last uh, moment. Um, we got all the tips. But I think the most important tip is um, enjoy it. Enjoy the time being a new player. Enjoy the tip. Enjoy the tip. I think... <laughs> Let's start over. <laughs> you ruined it for me. <laughs>